All right, welcome to today's Math Minute, a very special Math Minute, Math Minute number 50. We've made it, started at the bottom, now we're at the top. I wanted to do something special for Math Minute number 50, and so I have for you an investment opportunity. This is not Bitcoin, this is not cryptocurrency, not a Ponzi scheme or anything like that. Instead, here's my offer for you. I'm gonna flip a coin, and if that coin comes up heads, I'm gonna take whatever amount of money you're investing with me, and I'm gonna to cut it in half. Hold on, hold on. You haven't heard the other half of the investment. You don't know what else is going to happen. Hold your horses. If, on the other hand, the coin comes up tails, I'm going to triple your money and add a dollar for good measure. And here's the other great part of this investment. It's not just a 50-50 proposition. Like maybe you would say, well, I don't want to risk half my money on just a single coin flip. I'm actually going to let you flip this coin as many times as you want. You can ride this out. Every time we flip the coin and you get whatever amount of money you get back, either I cut it in half or I triple it and add a dollar, you can then take that resulting amount, flip the coin again, and see what's what. See whether you're going to lose half that money again or if you're going to triple your investment and add a dollar. Would you take this deal? The answer should overwhelmingly be absolutely, of course I would take this deal. Because on average, you're going to work out to something like a 50% gain every two coin flips. Yes, you're going to lose your money half the time, but the other half of the time, you're tripling your money and adding a dollar. Now, here's the thing. Uh, I don't have time to be flipping this coin for you, okay? I, I wanna help you, I wanna help your investment, but I can't be flipping the coin all the time. So let's actually pick a different 50-50 proposition. Instead of flipping a coin and seeing if it's heads I do one thing, if it's tails I do another, let's just say this. If the amount of money N that you invest with me is even, then we're gonna cut it in half. At least that way we can always cut it in half, end up with a nice non-decimal number at the end of that process. If the amount you start with is odd, then I'll triple it and add one. Still a 50-50 proposition, Position, right? Well, if you know anything about the Collett's conjecture, you know, no, this is not a 50-50 proposition anymore. Instead, I have just guaranteed, or at least this is what the conjecture says, I have guaranteed that you are going to lose your entire investment except for a single dollar. What do I mean? What's going on here? Well, imagine we start with a particular investment. Let's say we begin with $20. If we apply this rule, 20 obviously is even, and so we're going to take that and split it in half. N divided by 2, in this case, would be 10. 10. 10 is still even, and so we can split it in half again, and we're going to get 5. 5 is now the first time that we've won, so to speak. It's an odd number, so we get to triple that amount and then add 1. 3 times 5 is 15, plus 1 makes 16. So at least we've almost recouped our initial investment. We All we had to do is win once, right? Except, of course, the problem is that 16 is a very even number. 16 is a power of 2. And so now as I divide and get 8, divide and get 4, divide and and get two, and finally divide and get one, I am back to that single dollar. At this point, if you said, well, I still, that's not fair, I still wanna apply the rule, you'll notice what happens is that we're just gonna end up stuck in a loop. Three times one is three, plus one is four, and so we are going to be forever stuck in this four to one loop at the end of that process. Now, maybe you're thinking, well, that was just a bit of bad luck. We started with a $20 investment, which is already even, so of course, we immediately applied this rule, if n is even, divide by two. What if we start with some odd dollar investment instead? What if we started with, say, $21 instead? We do immediately win, so to speak. We're going to triple this and add one. Three times 21 is 63, plus one is 64. But if you're familiar with your powers of two, you know that we just hit a very bad number. 64 is very, very even. 64 will divide all the way back down to one because 64 is the same as two to the sixth power. Half of 64 is 32. Half of that is 16. Half of that that is eight, half of that is four, half of that is two, half of that is one, and we're back in that four, two, one loop. What the collets, what the, I don't know if it's collats, collets, I can't really pronounce it correctly. There are, I don't know, differing opinions online. But what the conjecture says is that this happens no matter what the initial investment is that you begin with. Part of why that's going on is because, of course, I said this isn't truly a 50-50 proposition anymore. Yes, if n is even and we divide it in half, half the time after that we'll have another even number, and half the time after that we'll have another odd number, but this second rule is a bit more sneaky. If n is odd and we triple it and add one, we always end up with an even number after that process. Three times any odd number is another odd number, plus one makes an even number every time. So basically by changing 
changing this rule from a true 50-50 proposition, heads, tails, which again, generation after generation, you will win. By the time you get to 30 generations, if you like model this out in Excel or something, 98% of the time, you're gonna be ahead of your initial investment if you're doing a true coin flip. But with this proposition instead, 75% of the time after that first generation, you will have an even number back and you'll be cutting that in half and the proportion just goes up from there. What the conjecture says is that this is not just something that proportionally is gonna happen more often, but it has to happen. Or another way to think about this is that no matter what number you start with, as you repeat this process over and over again, at some point you are bound to hit a power of two and as soon as that happens, you get stuck into that four, two, one loop after you divide, 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 all the way down to one. If you're thinking to yourself, well, maybe we just haven't tried the right number yet, you would be here for a while. Mathematicians have tried every number up to two to the 68th power, and so far all of them reduce down or decay to one as we apply this process over and over again. Now, two to the 68th seems like a large number, and many people do indeed believe that the Collatz conjecture is true, that no matter what initial seed you begin with, it will always decay to one. However, many is not all. The mathematician Alex Kontorovich has written a thread on this on Twitter saying, in fact, one of the reasons why we might not have been able to prove the Collatz conjecture false yet is that so many people believe it's true, no one's really trying that hard to prove that it's false. For example, the, probably the world's greatest mathematician, Terry Tao, a couple years ago, had this kind of significant result where he was able to show that the Collatz conjecture is almost true for almost all numbers. That is, if I understand it correctly, for all numbers except for a particular set of numbers, a particular kind of set of numbers, we can show that you will end up at a much smaller number than you began with at some point in the process. And so that idea that you would end up at some smaller point at some point would lean you toward the direction that yes, everything will eventually reduce to one. But that's as far as Terry Tao got and no one else has been able to prove this is true. Kontorovich on Twitter writes about some ways that you might go about proving that it's false instead. And he also writes about why that whole, well, we've already checked all the numbers up to 2 to the 68th power, isn't actually that impressive. Again, I don't know that I fully understand his reasoning here, but he said, if you think of the 3x plus 1 process as computer hardware rather than as a process, and you think about the seeds of numbers as the software that we plug into that hardware, all we're really saying when we say we've checked the numbers up to 2 to the 68th power is so far we've loaded all the possible programs up to 68 characters long, and they've all halted, they've all finished at the end getting to one in that process. And a 68 character long program is not that impressive. We could write much, much larger programs. And of course, there are much, much larger numbers than two to the 68th. So it may be that there are some special kinds of numbers that have some property that means as they engage in the 3n plus one process, they don't ever hit a power of two. That for some reason they avoid all the powers of two and therefore they would never end up engaging in that loop going down to four, two, one at the end of the process. If you want to engage in some more ideas is there is a number file video on the Klatz conjecture that I think is particularly helpful. And I will just warn you, the Klatz conjecture is like a graveyard for ambitious mathematicians. There are many ideas people have tried. No one has been able to prove it or disprove it just yet. But who knows? That's part of the fun of the problem. It's so tempting because it's so easy to understand the process itself. Basically, any third or fourth grader can do, and yet it still eludes the world's greatest mathematicians. What do you think? Comment down below. Are we going to prove or disprove the Collatz conjecture in the next 20 or 30 or 50 years. Maybe one year for each of the math minutes that has existed so far. I hope that you have enjoyed this journey. I'm planning to do more, but I'm pretty happy with the 50 that we've got so far. If there's one in particular that you liked more than the others, comment down below. I would love to know what it is. And otherwise, I'll see y'all next time. You want to? Come here. If you Hold can... on, let me make sure that you're in frame. Okay, scoot toward me. My son's got a little suggestion for the commenters. What do you think, buddy? If you can find a way where you do as much coin flips as you want and you can get a big, um, bigger amount of money than you started with, then you, there will be a special prize. We, for sure, if you prove or disprove the Klatz conjecture after having watched my video, I will make sure you get a special prize. That sound good? All right, tell them. We'll see you next time. See you next time. And subscribe. <laughs> yeah, like and subscribe. <laughs>